This week's first question comes from Jennifer Chung, who asks, Jax, I'm currently working a full-time uh, job in my day job and part-time in a business. At what time would you recommend going full-time into this business? Jennifer, this is a great question and one that I'm faced with constantly from people who are looking to make the transition into full-time, you know, running their own business full-time. And the answer is this. A lot goes on in the preparatory stage before you will actually launch your business. You need to get a great deal of consumer insight. You need to find your hungry crowd. You need to understand how you're going to speak to this consumer insight, speak to this market demand. You need to have a product to market fit. You need to have a message to market fit. There's a whole bunch of ducks that we can line up before you need to go to market and during going to market that you can do while working a full-time job. So my advice to you is this, do not quit your full-time job immediately and go into full-time entrepreneurship if you like. If you do that often your cash flow will fall off a cliff and there won't be much of a safety net to catch you. What I encourage you to do is this, transition slowly. If you can bring your employment down to four days a week, you can work on your business one day a week putting everything in place. Once it's in place you might bring it down to two days a week and then go to market in your business now working two days a week and as the cash flow component builds within your new business, you'll be able to spend more time in your new business, less time in your employment, and that way it's a lot safer play in terms of monitoring, managing cash flow along the way. Perhaps a fairly boring answer, but one that will help you be a lot more comfortable and hopefully enjoy the journey a lot more while de-risking your position in terms of your personal finances. The second question comes from Faction Elite, whose Twitter handle is at the Faction Elite, who asks, Jack, if you stood to gain 20% of all future profits, which by the way, I'm taking as a contractual arrangement going forth, from my endeavors as a young entrepreneur, what three books would you recommend? Great question. And it's a great question because my answer to this is probably a little bit counterintuitive. A lot of people ask me what the top business book I would recommend is, and my answer is not actually a business book. My top three business books are, number one, Conversations with God. This is not a religious book, nor is it um, a book about any you know, particular religious stance. It is more about spirituality and helping you become the best version of yourself. To me, entrepreneurship is not a vehicle to make money. To me, entrepreneurship is a vehicle to realize the highest and truest vision that you hold for your life. And that can be true whether you run your own business or not. It's not about running your own business. It's about living a life that's true to you. Conversations with God gives you a whole bunch of life-shifting and life-changing paradigms around how to view yourself and how to view the world and how to view your higher self and do all of that in the most empowering way possible. It's a personal evolution book and it's a spiritual evolution book. That's my number one recommendation. Number two in terms of book is a book called Talent is Overrated. It's by a guy called Jeff Colvin. It looks at the greats of history, the people we would consider to be great, the Michael Jordans, the Tiger Woods, the Mozarts, the Oprah Winfrey's, and it asks the question, how much of a part did natural talent play in achieving their level of success? I love this book because it determines that natural talent doesn't have any bearing in achieving uh, a high level of sustainable success, but rather it comes down to something called deliberate practice, which in our language is hard work mixed with ongoing learning. It will teach you that you don't need to be born great. If you study any of the greats, be it Mandela through to Oprah Winfrey, you'll realize that none of them were born great. They developed a higher sense of purpose for their life and then they learned how to actualize that purpose one day at a time in an often very challenging uh, and roller coaster kind of a journey. Talent is Overrated is a phenomenal book. And then the third book is actually a business book. Uh, it's called Zero to One by Peter Thiel and this again is what I call genuinely counterintuitive thinking. I think um, particularly in business and startup space and all of that sort of stuff, a lot of people try and be different for different sake. Uh, Peter Thiel is different because he's genuinely different. The thoughts and opinions and the arguments that he puts forward in terms of how to build a meaningful business that is going to make an impact is genuinely counterintuitive and one that all entrepreneurs must read. So go ahead and get those three books. Let me know how you go with them. And lastly, our final question comes from... Marcelo Ferreira, who asks, Tupac or Eminem? Brilliant question, Marcelo. You must have been following me very closely to understand my taste in music. Here is my answer to your question. Tupac for depth and meaning, Eminem for technical lyricism and rhyme schemes. If anybody is into hip hop out there, you'll know exactly what I mean. Guys, that is this segment of Ask Jack. 
Thank you for joining us. As I said, we'll be doing these segments very regularly. You can hit us up using the hashtag, uh, hash, what's it called? <laughs> and submit your questions using the hashtag at f You can hit us up through Twitter using the hashtag AskJackD and also tag me personally, I'm just at Jack Delosa. Using those two means, you're able to submit your questions. I will answer them live to camera and hopefully be able to uh, provide a little bit of light on this path we call entrepreneurship. Until the next segment, I look forward to seeing you then.